For many years, the composition of the dialysate used in hemodialysis remained stable, until a decade ago when the bicarbonate was substituted for acetate. Recently, advanced renal technologies introduced a new chemical formulation of the dialysate that can improve dialysis treatment. Citrazate is the first new dialysate formulation in decades. The new formulation in citrazate contains the natural substance citric acid in place of acetic acid, which all other dialysates have. Citrazate dialysate contains a small quantity, around 2.4 milli equivalent per liter of citric acid, that provides mild anticoagulations where needed in the extracorporeal circuit. Citric acid is a physiological acid that is rapidly metabolized in the liver, muscle, and kidney. It's important as an intermediate in the citric acid cycle, which is also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is a part of metabolic pathway involved in chemical conversion of carbohydrates, fats, and protein into carbon dioxide and water, generating a form of usable energy. However, the Krebs cycle also functions in biosynthetic pathways in which intermediates leave the cycle to be converted to glucose, fatty acids, or non-essential amino acids. Numerous studies outcomes have demonstrated a correlation between the delivered dose of hemodialysis and the patient's mortality and morbidity. Evidences have shown that the mortality among end-stage renal disease patients is lower when sufficient hemodialysis treatments are provided. Therefore, clinical signs and symptoms alone are not reliable indicators of hemodialysis adequacy. Citrazate treatment dramatically increases the delivered dialysis dose over a shorter period of time, allowing more dialysis sessions. This includes improved KT over V and urea reduction ratio, as well as an increase in the pre-dialysis serum bicarbonate levels, improving the dialysis outcomes. In a 12-week study done at the University of Washington Medical Center, 23 patients were switched from regular dialysate to citrazate. The urea reduction ratio increased from 68% to 73%, and the KT over V from 1.23 to 1.34 from the first to the last dialysis respectively. There was no change in the blood flow, time and hours, neither in dialysers. The only treatment change was associated with the increase in the urea reduction ratio and the KT over V was the switch to the use of citrazate. The KT over V was compared on regular dialysate for 6 months, followed by the use of citrazate for the next 6 months. The study showed that the KT over V remained unchanged during the 6 months on regular dialysate, while the switch to citrazate was associated with increase in KT over V apparent in the first 3 months as well as a decline in pre-dialysis beta-2 microglobulin concentration. The systemic acid-based changes trigger striking changes in the citrate clearance and metabolism. Recent evidence suggests that the effect of acid-based changes are mediated by alternation in the pH gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Metabolic acidosis causes cytoplasmic pH and bicarbonate to decrease, resulting in an increase in the mitochondrial pH gradient. This change stimulates the tricarboxylate carrier, enhancing entry of citrate into the mitochondrial matrix compartment. Change in the mitochondrial pH gradient provides a sensitive mechanism for regulating renal substrate metabolism. The renal clearance of citrate is greatly decreased during metabolic acidosis. All of the citrate filtered through the glomerulus is reabsorbed in the nephron with only small quantities escaping into the urine. It was found that pre-dialysis serum bicarbonate levels increased, and significantly, more patients had a pre-dialysis bicarbonate concentration within the normal range at the end of the study compared to the start. Citrate metabolism alone may explain the increase in serum bicarbonate level, as patients using citrazate show a trend toward an increase in serum albumin and a decrease in phosphate concentration both of which suggest a decrease in protein breakdown via stimulating the Krebs cycle, improving the nutritional status, reducing protein breakdown and urea generation. However, increased intradialytic bicarbonate transfer from the dialysate to the blood might also be a factor as the result of a possible effect of citric acid on the dialyzer membrane. Citrate has gained more popularity as an anticoagulant during hemodialysis because of the advantages of an inefficient anticoagulation that is exclusively confined to the extracorporeal circulation. Citric acid is also a well-known anticoagulant. 
It has a long and safe history of the use in medicine. Adequate anticoagulation is used to prevent extracorporeal blood clotting. This improves the dialyzer permeability and biocompatibility. As the dialyzer clots during dialysis, this will reduce effective dialyzer surface area, minimize the dialyzer permeability, and minimize the dialysis dose adequacy. Heparin is widely used for prevention and treatment of thromboembolic disorders and to prevent clotting within the extracorporeal circuit during hemodialysis. However, the systemic anticoagulant nature of heparin increases the risk of bleeding complications and therefore cannot be safely used in post-surgical patients or in those who are actively bleeding. Researchers from Mayo Clinic had attributed the rising rates of mortality in kidney failure patients undergoing hemodialysis to increased level of heparin antibodies in their bodies. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and associated thrombotic events are relatively common side effects of heparin therapy that can cause morbidity and mortality. Usually, those conditions occur after five days from therapy, but they can appear sooner in patients previously treated with heparin. Thrombocytopenia in itself rarely poses a threat to affected patients, but disorders associated with it, such as GVT, DIC, pulmonary embolism, cerebral thrombosis, and myocardial infarction can produce severe morbidity and mortality. It has become standard medical practice to monitor platelet counts in patients receiving heparin for any extended period. It can be speculated that chronic exposure to heparin plays a role in reduction of the platelet counts commonly seen in renal failure patients. It has been estimated that 20 to 50 percent of patients receiving heparin therapy develop heparin-induced platelet antibodies, 3 percent have a drop in platelet counts, and 1 percent experience thrombotic complications. The use of citrate as an anticoagulant during hemodialysis induces lower activation of coagulation than both unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight heparin, which contribute to an improvement of biocompatibility of hemodialysis extracorporeal circulation. When scanning electron micrographs of the inner surface of polysulfone holofiber dialyzer membrane using unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and citrate as anticoagulant during hemodialysis therapy, it was found that the use of citrate reduces or eliminates the need for the anticoagulant heparin without its adverse effects. This will consequently retain the patient's ability to clot. The low activation of the coagulation system might open up the potential to reduce the anticoagulant dose. Therefore, the biocompatibility of the dialysis membranes and whole blood is the major concern. 31 patients were identified as having prolonged bleeding time at the end of the dialysis sessions when using regular dialysate. Those patients were switched to citrazate and two months later their heparin dose was reduced to 33.5%. Two months later, the heparin dose further reduced by another 32%, making a total of 55% reduction from the baseline. After the second reduction, patients were followed for another three months showing a reduction in bleeding time. Moreover, during this period, the dialyzer and blood tubing remained free of clots, the KT over V increased, and pre-dialysis beta-2 microglobulin levels were lower during the use of citrazate. It was found that citrazate matches very well with slow, low, efficient daily dialysis as the renal replacement therapy of choice for critically ill patients. Many patients had significantly compromised liver functions, and even in those acutely ill patients, the citrazate was well tolerated without any adverse effects. Therefore, citrazate is indicated for all hemodialysis patients, aiming to achieve an adequate dialysis dose over a shorter period of time, allowing more dialysis sessions, providing a significant source of additional bicarbonate to the blood, and reducing the incidence of chronic acidosis. Citrazate reduces or eliminates the need for systemic anticoagulant heparin, which helps in retaining the patient's ability to clot and reduces heparin side effects, providing an effective alternative for patients with high risk of bleeding from the use of systemic anticoagulation, for example, ICU and post-operative patients, and when it's contraindicated to use heparin, such as patients with heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, patients with heparin intolerance, whose dialyzer clot despite of large amount of heparin. Citrazate is much more economic than other dialyzates, 
as it diminishes dialyzer or blood line loss due to the clotting during dialysis. Extracorporeal circuit flushing is reduced or eliminating, saving on staff time and additional equipments, as well as improving the dialyzer usability.